about to go in the wall of her. Let's stick in the shinty bowl to brick the brack the crack and all. Let's call it an Irish pub. Hey! shark, cook any of pop, the Guinness, put in a cabbage crap. The eye don't want to be patty trap. We'll call it an Irish pub. While I'll be fucked as Welcome to episode one of the Pubcast. My name is Brendan O'Neill, and I would normally be joined by Mike Cross and Michelle Riley. But in these first few episodes, we are re- revisiting our previous podcast, Boardwalk Breakdown. Basically, we're shutting down the Boardwalk Breakdown podcast and moving those 13 episodes over here so we can keep them alive and well in our archives. So, the Pubcast is our new podcast where we'll talk about all kinds of stuff and not be limited to only talking about Boardwalk Empire. And it will actually begin on episode 14. So just consider these first 13 episodes as bonus content. Slancha. Welcome to the Boardwalk Breakdown Podcast, featuring Michelle Riley, Mike Cross, and me, Brendan O'Neill. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact us on Twitter, at Boardwalk Break. Enjoy the show. All right. All right. <laughs> Episode 2, Season 5. Um, we are short one person. Uh, Mike is on hiatus, uh, being replaced by Allison O'Neill, my wife. Welcome, Allison. Say hello. Oh, thank you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Say hello to the four people listening. Uh, episode two. Before we get into it, let's get into the details of playing off of the last episode. I hated the last episode. Yeah. I love this one. Well, it's a great episode. I knew you were going to love it. Yeah. This brought in all the characters and maybe didn't answer the questions of... No, answered almost four. no questions. But it but got there was a lot of it got the four, a lot of stuff that happened. Yeah, the sure. other plot lines started going. I mean, uh, we we see Eli, who's a mess um, in Chicago, a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to see what happens there because I thought he was sort of going to fall off as a character, but he's back no, in it. No, and, he's and I think a train he's proving wreck. that he's going to be pivotal, pivotal to yeah. the whole series. So I have to ask this question. I, it may have been clear to everyone else, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Did he escape to Chicago or was he sent there? Does Nucky know he's there or right. not? No. He made, uh, you know, he alluded to the fact that he sees his wife occasionally. Do his kids think he's dead? What's going on there? Do you get it? Or are we still wondering? I, I don't think it was clear. I think he escaped. I think he's there sort of secretly. Mm. Yeah. I don't know, though. I mean, yeah, being, a, I being a, a, effectively, well, is he a fictional character? I don't know if if Thompson has a real brother. Anyway, he's he's going to play a, a key role, obviously. Um, but so, all right, we, we, we get Eli is in Chicago. I thought the opening was interesting because it was a whole new artsy sort of opening. Uh, it was a different feel from the previous handful of episodes. It, it was way different. We didn't get all the... Um, it was a very dream sequence type yeah. opening that, yeah. Which they kind of did last time with Which the... Which they do a lot in the yeah. beginning. Yeah. But, it, well, without getting ahead, but also it was kind of the closing Closing at the end was kind of the same thing. Right. So. Yeah. It, it was similar but different to the uh, underwater 1844 Nucky, right. you know, backstory. Um, we, we see, and I'll go through a couple of these and we can get into the details in a minute we meet Lansky and see what he's doing um Torio uh he's talking to Nucky we've got Lansky meeting with our buddy Lucky and then we are introduced to Bugsy yeah Bugsy Siegel um we see Eli's son we see Capone we get Van Alden we get Jillian we get all kinds of stuff. This is what I wanted from the next episode. This was right. this is where we sh- should be. So, and this really, I mean, we've been talking a lot about Nucky's quest for redemption, and this really set the stage for that. I mean, this character is trying desperately to go legit, mm-hmm. and he has this great scene with the um, refined gentleman. 
about taking this business legit. And then he also, after this, has this nice soliloquy with his bodyguard that sort of lays everything out. Right. Um, but, yeah, it's really a Michael Corleone moment, right? Oh, definitely. Where he's trying to go straight. And when they revealed that it was... It was revealed that it was Joe, Joe Kennedy. Kennedy. I laughed right out, right yeah. out loud because I thought, oh, God, how perfect. Well, and when then, we were first watching it, Brendan does, oh, yeah. you know, when... You know who that is. You know who that right. is. And, and they, um, they started talking about uh, the Mayflower Grain Company. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I mean, I have an idea what it is, of course. And they started mentioning Dewars and Moet. I'm like, right, ooh, yeah. that's yeah. that's Kennedy. That's right, got to be yeah. Kennedy, right? Right. Joe Kennedy. That's fantastic. And then he recognized, oh, of course, those glasses. He right. always wore those glasses. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was That, that actor was, was really, really charming, too. I hope they'll show Kennedy's bad side because he was kind of a my bastard. hunch that that's what's gonna happen i mean they kind of teed it up that way yeah. and i i think that the the um the group that he was meeting with you know it was kind of this these coy questions that they were asking yeah. and nucky kind of calls him he's like okay why you know, are you why, why are you, you pretending yeah. that this is that this is new information or a surprise right at all what my background is or what my experience is and um, yeah. and and so after the conversation, after he leaves the meeting, Joe Kennedy is kind of smirk when they were talking about it. Just made me think yeah. that there is going to be something more. Um, well, yeah, I mean, Nucky wants to go legit. He was talking to the uh, uh, the board of the the grain company. Um, then he talks to Kennedy, sort of like whether or not he was aware of him before. He's almost. I mean, he's literally looking up to him, but he's figurative. Figuratively looking up to him when he talks to his bodyguard afterwards. Right, right. That was a Nucky great wants to be Joe Kennedy. Absolutely. That's, and that's I loved how he pull. said, I met an Irishman today who had his hands or his fingers in a dozen different pies. Yeah. Do you think he wades through blood to make money? Right, and I thought right. that's, that's, that's it. That's the whole season. That's really the whole show yeah, right there. That, that's what Nucky wants. And clearly, I mean, it seems to me he'll never get it, but uh, that's his goal forever. Um, so backing up, I mean, that was a, a key point toward the the beginning or, or middle of the episode. Right. We see everyone's favorite, Jillian, in oh. the oh, sanitarium. That scene was ter- – it was terrific, the way that it they was. started they, it. They and teed then, it up as it being like a spa. And yes, then it's not. yes. And then um, – yeah, it was it was pretty startling how like how quickly it went crazy. Yeah. Right, you know it was it was such an interesting yeah. um, uh, switch. Yeah, and the the warden or yeah, whatever that she was like that, bananas, right? Yeah, so that says there's some that, nonsense going on there, and yes. they're up to no good. In yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was kind of expecting the the scene. Um, later in the show to go like kind of a really crazy way. Oh, yeah. Perhaps it's still going to in yeah, a future episode. But I mean, it. I mean, there's just a lot <laughs> going on behind the scenes that she's probably right. Yeah. So I, I mean, wonder sh- if wh- why is she in the loony bin? Excuse me, the asylum, <laughs> as opposed to jail. I want. I mean, I know that's going to come out, but it'll be interesting to see how she ended up getting there. Did was it a plea bargain? Did she negotiate that instead of jail? She must have cut a deal. What with, happened? What's her face? What's his face? Her former boyfriend, her, right, Ron Livingston. Ron Livingston's character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting to me. And then, you know, she's obviously, you know, negotiating something with this warden. Mm-hmm. But then why why did she have the dress brought in? Is this Jillian finally losing her marbles, or is she really being strategic? I think she had that in storage in the that basement. Was, that was in her suitcase. It looked like it was the the trunks or the yeah. suitcases of all the the, the patients or like the when you check clients. in, you, you, you right your it's stuff your luggage. Storage. And so I think it was whatever she had in her suitcase, and she's using that to trade for whatever it is that she's really trying to get to this end goal. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is, I, I wasn't clear on that. Why didn't the crazy warden lady just take it, steal it? Oh, I don't think that's what the warden wants. Right. <laughs> that, I, that's kind of where I'm headed. I assume yeah. so, but it, it was... A, I'm surprised they stopped short of that in, in this episode. Stopped short of any sort of sexual component. Oh, there will be. I mean, yeah. Jillian is so have to right so bananas that you know there is going to be a sexual component. But 
obviously the warden herself is it, it, completely oh, warped. Yeah. Yeah. So there's obviously some satisfaction in going through this process because otherwise she could just attack the woman. I don't think that's yeah. what she wants. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's probably mm-hmm. some sort of seduction where she's right. trying to almost like bait her in to make her the think warden. that she's getting what she wants, but right. at, at some point she's going to be able to totally cut things off and it's she's going to up the ante, so to speak. Right. Um, and Gretchen Ma, you can just feel it on her face. Like, she sees how... I mean, you can just feel yeah. it. She really does an incredible job of sort of just showing how yeah. disturbed... You know, how disturbed yeah. she really yeah. is. Also, toward the first half, we, we see Eli's son, William, uh, interviewing for a state's attorney job, and he can't get away from his connections to his uncle. And again, that was, I don't know who's double crossing who on that one. I I would agree because the conversation later, I mean, it, it, the conversation that he had with, with Nucky later, right. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to tell because Nucky got him out right in the prior season. So, you know, which direction is he really going? What does he know about where his father is today? You know, part of you wants to think that he, they're all in on it, and right. he is being very strategic about getting this job. But he's, then the other part of it is, you know, this kid a, has always been a wild card. Of yeah. course, but he has to be a plant by Nucky, because otherwise yeah, maybe. that kid can get a, get a job at any other uh, firm, but he went to the state's attorney who, who could okay. have influence and, and right. power that Nucky can use later right, on. Right. Well, so that was my assumption. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it could be a part of the, the his plot to actually try to go legit by having him right. in, yeah. Yeah. Or protecting him in the event right. that he needs that protection, yeah. Um, we also see, um, so we see Lansky, and we see Lucky, and we see Bugsy, Bugsy Siegel. Right. Um, Bugsy Siegel, I, he's known or famously being sort of a hothead, flamboyant Impulsive, guy. Yeah. Um, the kid, they're, they're playing him very young in this. I which, thought so too. I thought it was interesting. He plays way younger than Lansky and, and Lucky. He does. He plays younger than them, and also, of course, our frame of reference for Bugsy Malone, right? Is yeah. Born baby, and so, yeah. yeah, you don't really have that. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. And, and that actor is so familiar to me. I know, I know. Because he's always try- in these gangster <laughs> movies. I don't know his name. He's great. But it was just sort of like, wait, do we already know this guy? Um, is he already? So I did find that a little confusing. He's in The Sopranos, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. And I kept trying to place him on the spectrum of, of the Italian gangsters. Yeah, or I'll include Lansky in that because he's involved in that right. team. But Lansky's sort of cool and calculated kind of trying to be the Rothstein, but he's obviously not quite Mm -hmm. there. Um, Lucky's sort of in the middle, but still a little hot-headed. Capone's far right. right. He's a maniac. This Bugsy seems closer to Capone than anything else. He's a a nutball. He seems (laughs) sort of, you say the wrong thing and he's on top of you. I thought that was unusual. I didn't expect that one. I thought they'd play him a little more together. Well, I mean... It's obvious they want Nucky out, yeah. and they're taking steps to make that happen. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, right before that, we saw, help me with the Don of Dons. Oh, uh, Maranzano. Maranzano. Um, and obviously, Lucky, you know, Lucky let uh, him and, and Nucky know that they weren't with Meyer, and then obviously that was a lie, yeah. too. So, very interesting how this whole organization believes that Nucky's obviously a major threat to what they're trying to do and stands in their way. Yeah, although it doesn't seem that they're they're camouflaging it very well. It, no. Like, Nucky's all over him. He knows what's going on over there. Yeah. He seems to, at least. But do you think part of, of this is, or do they see him as a threat because of his ability to possibly influence... Um, or take over when it, when things go legit, when prohibition ends. Does I that... don't think these guys care that much. Do you? I mean, I don't think. I don't. I think Nucky's thinking it... about what happens when prohibition ends. I don't think Lucky Luciano is. He's just. They trying... don't go that far. They see him messing with their money. Yeah, right. Business. Whatever. Right. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. 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 I mean, because uh... that's 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 the that's the business. That's the money. Right. I mean, so. he's standing in their way of right. getting control of the Atlantic City area. Although Lansky was in Cuba. 
But it doesn't seem like that crew has an idea that Prohibition is ending soon and they got to get their ducks in a row at all. Right, no. And Cuba was the, you know, Miami. It was, it was. It was. <laughs> of the dime, it was. you know, it was where everyone would go. But he was, he was there because of Nucky, but I wonder if he would, if anything would have rubbed off or he was there for a different reason or, I mean, obviously the Nucky thing. Yeah, I think it was quite common. Um, all right. We do get a little bit of a, well, I hate to go. This is my, my last episode dilemma. We get a flashback into Nucky's um, sister's death in that whole mm-hmm. scene. Um, she died of tuberculosis or some sort of right. respiratory issue, I think. Um, and then... His father can't pay for the for proper funeral because he drank the money away or something. And then the Commodore gets involved. He wants to pay his respects. And only only when his second in command tells him that, you know, give this kid a break. Give this Nucky kid a break. Um, and uh, you, you know, are I, so sad for Nucky. I know. You know, I, I couldn't remember from the prior episode, but the 50 bucks that he got from the Commodore... He didn't get it. He didn't get it? I thought that he... he turned did. it in. But I thought he got something at the end. I mean, he, I remember that, but then I thought it somehow lesson. came back. Yeah, they were going to... Oh, that's right. I'm on it. Yeah. They were about to give it to him, or like this Commodore's number two was kind of trying to hint but he got to the give job. it to him. He got the job, so to speak. He got screwed well, he first, did. and he got blown off, and right. then, he, then he said, come back, and then... Right. Start sweeping my sweeping the uh, uh, sand off the porch. Right, but it was Commodore's. You know, nice guys do not finish. Yes, yeah, right. Lesson that like, he was right. imparting upon. You don't get a reward for bringing this back. Right. Your reward is working. Right. Yeah. You know those type of things. So there's also another implication with that storyline that maybe there is a, a a deeper relationship between Ethan. I think is the dad's name. Yeah. And right. the Commodore. Right. So they obviously have some history that we haven't quite right. figured out what what it is yet. Yeah, I mean he's a, he's a fisherman field. or yeah. a a, uh-huh. a docksman, or, you know, some sort of a. But they could have. I mean, who knows how far back it is? Right. Maybe it has something to do with the mother. I don't know. Right. Well, there was they referenced some sort of land deal, and I don't know yes. if that right. goes back to the if that was in the very first season or not. It was uh, the first. No, the first this is episode. the first we've yeah. really heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's going to come out. It's got to be soon because they only have six more episodes to wrap this thing up. So they've right. got to mm-hmm. figure this out. Um, that's interesting. I, I'm still. I want to move forward. I don't want to go backward in, in this series. I, it loses me a little bit when it talks about the ancient history, but uh, I get it. It's, pro- it's building this. I like something. it a little. I like it a little bit when they do that because it, it gives a little bit more depth to the Nucky Thompson trying to go legit. Like mm-hmm. there is something about his innate. You know, being as a child that he was really trying to be honest and do the right thing, right. but it was all these other people that were coaching him to, you know, as you said, nice guys don't finish first, they finish last, so to yeah. uh, sort of I, lesson, but... I agree. I mean, my argument was um, most of this stuff, not maybe not the details like that, but most of the stuff you kind of knew or you were inferred here and there about it, and I, if they were going to do this, I wish it would have happened two seasons ago. There's too much to wrap up in this season. All right, you've got to get over it. All right, right. You've on. got to get over it. It's a device, and you of all people as the writer device in this group should understand that it is a literary device. I'm in order. impatient with this thing. So, Okay, now we get to a character and a subject near and dear to our hearts being in Chicago, Capone. <laughs> Crazy town. Yes. We see Capone. Wow. Seven years Torrio has all but retired. I mean, he, I think he has retired. He's really point. pathetic, too, isn't he? I yeah. mean, he's just yeah. so over And it. you can see him being old and... Great and, and after, around. that guy. Yeah. 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 And uh, Capone is at his height. He's at the zenith of his powers, or just about. I mean, this scene where he's getting his, his suit tailored, and he's got right. 25 Goombas around him, just, just at his beck and call, <laughs> doing whatever. <laughs> it's amazing. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and he's so ADD, right? He just yeah, he yeah. can't concentrate, and he's just yeah. randomly bombarded by every little thing, yeah. and distracted into different things. I I didn't know this, but I learned later that that interview that yeah. he was giving was quite quite famous. It was a real one, yeah. I I, I just read Variety about it a couple magazine. days ago. Yeah, the Variety interview. 
Um, so, yeah, Capone is ready to pop at any moment. And uh, I thought that was fantastic. I, I, I want more of Capone. Uh, so, but as part of that, we are reintroduced to Van Alden. Right. And my he's favorite indeed. creepy, he insane is character. He's right now. And Eli. Apparently, Eli's working for Van Alden. Right. And Van Alden's part of Capone's crew. Right. right. <sighs> crazy town. Yeah, it is crazy town. <laughs> it's crazy town. <laughs> and just the amount of excess. When you see that that scene that we were talking about with the interview and the tailoring the pile going of cash. on, there's yeah. so many people. Yeah. There's a pile of cash. It's clearly like a hotel. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing it's a Palmer house, right? Isn't that where he was? Yeah, I think to, so. I think so. Known to hang out. I don't think he's in Cicero yet, so it's got to be downtown somewhere. Um, all right, so. I'm not sure if you're going to get there, but Go please tell me we're going to talk about the elevator scene. At some oh, point, that was a, that was a beautifully, beautifully executed scene. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's you know it started. That's where you really learn the hierarchy. Right. You know how far Eli has fallen, so right. to right. speak, um, in terms of his rank within the, the the business or the industry of bootlegging. That he is down below the lank the the ranks and his. Bender, or whatever it was that he was on that at the beginning right. of right. Um, yeah. the episode and the bus that goes on when, frankly, it sounds like he was supposed to be the one on watch, cost, what, $20,000? Yeah, and yeah. at that right. time is, you yeah. know. But it was also a nice moment of levity and a I, very, very heavy I show. Agree. I agree. Well, it had two <laughs> great ladies. things. The ladies with the feathers. Nothing... Maybe nothing in the show is as great on screen as Michael Shannon as Van Alden <laughs> just being frustrated and annoyed and just he can't <laughs> ever do what he wants. And he gets pissed yeah. off and he plays it so well. Yeah. And that's and, perfect in this scene. And, and it starts – so he's mad at Eli – and yeah. he's getting chewed out in the elevator, and they reference his giant head. And <laughs> yeah. then I looked at him like, yeah. oh, my God, his head really is gigantic. gigantic. Oh, yeah. Like, how he can wear a hat, I don't know. Yeah. But um, And so, Size you know, this is happening, and, and he's ye- then he's, like, yelling at Eli, basically, once the he gets yelled at. You know, you cost us twenty thousand dollars, and because you work for me, I'm on the line. And then these two women come yeah. in and ask them to say hello to their dog. I mean, it's just the most ridiculous. Right, and then the uh, constantly taking hats turning off and around. Yes. Hats back yes. on, yeah. and then the ladies' hats. It kept turning around. Head. It was great. And this, I loved it. I this loved is it. the scene where you see. I mean, like you mentioned, uh, Eli is the underling. And is that because he escaped and he's just a, a, an alcoholic mess? Is that part of the plan where he's supposed to sort of play okay. possum and, and, you know, get in there and see what happens? So that's, that's confusing. That's a mystery that we're yeah. going to, we're going to find out about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, before we leave Chicago, it's great to see that Elliot Ness has made it to town. Yes. I was going to say, I was waiting for him to come in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't recognize the actor. Uh, Didn't either, no. It was not Kevin Costner. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I was waiting for. (laughs) Uh, Side note, do you know in the movie I cried the hardest in my life in a movie? I was in the theater. Don't say it was Untouchables. It was Untouchables. Come on. I don't know why, but when Sean Connery is shot and he's just like sliding through the, the... the apartment. Yeah. I was like in the theater doing one of these. <laughs> <laughs> like the gasping for air sobbing. Oh, no. I'll never forget how, how he hard pulls a knife, he pulls a gun. That's right. It's he sends Chicago one of yours to the hospital, sends one of yours to the morgue. That's right. It's Chicago way. I was bawling. Wow. <laughs> I was anyway, not expecting that. Back to Elliot. So that's going to that, be. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> what? I said I was not expecting that. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, El- Elliot Ness is going to be the, the the new guy, obviously uh, in Capone's business. Um, I wonder what? how. Where do we leave it with? So, so the feds have just totally dismissed the Atlantic City stuff after. I think so. I think um, hmm. I don't know. The end of season four. Yeah, you know, got a little bloody there. I, Nucky made a deal with the oh, woman. That's right. FBI agent 
Um, and then, um, honestly, I can't remember the details. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we gotta move back. He's out of it. And yeah. It, yeah, it's it's uh, we're back to uh, the heart of prohibition, and now we have Elliot Ness to contend with. So. Right. Do you think there's That's any? Key. This may be real conspiracy theory and less historically accurate. But do you think there's any connection then with Nucky's son going into the? Um, what, state's attorney's office yeah. and Elliot Ness. and and Eli then being in Chicago, kind of working for and you know the bottom ranks of Capone's organization. You know, is that a way oh. to potentially dismantle? You know, in Nucky's mind, a way to dismantle or kind of reduce sure, that. dismantle uh, Capone's. Yeah. At right. the same time, getting favor for right. Will and right. keeping the heat off of him. I mean, that right. that would be a brilliant twist. Right. All that plus Nucky trying to get the Volstead Act repealed. I mean, right. he's playing right. every angle to get this thing right. to happen. So, right. Yeah, I, that makes sense, of course. That's probably the the most um, the brightest insight we've had on yeah. this podcast to date, Allison. Thank you very much. You know, <laughs> I feel like I should be leaving on a high note almost yeah. because. <laughs> 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 well, you own it. You own that one. All right, so let's put that one down in the books. Exactly. We'll, see how, exactly. we'll see how this plays Mark out. Mark my end words. Of the... <laughs> um, all right. Uh, <laughs> more flashbacks to the Commodore. Uh, my notes here, uh, all I wrote was Commodore dot 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 major asshole. So that that's my take on the Commodore. Well, the Commodore is a major he, asshole. But he, he – up. Like up his own ante every time, and it just, yes, he's he really he, when you think he terrible. can't get worse, he gets worse every yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. Put the money on the coffin type. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. And then of course, Nucky's dad it yeah. proves to be slimier and slimier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was heart wrenching. Uh, at the end of that, that scene, child was oh, so earnest God. and sweet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God. yeah. Um. All right, we talked about Maranzano. I mean, is it almost like the bearing of the innocence, so to speak? Like, I mean, I, I'm just yes. wondering what's going to happen in these future fa- flashbacks after that. Does that kind of break the spirit? Does that, you know, like what does that really do to him? And how quickly do does he really start to turn in terms of his own ethics? Or right, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this yeah. plays out over the next couple of episodes. I mean, one of the things we've talked about on previous episodes is thematically. You know, clearly this is a person that um, that wanted to do the right thing and for whatever reason, circumstance, opportunity, mm-hmm. uh, forced him into a situation that he's not proud of, but he's also not afraid of and mm-hmm. certainly doesn't shy away from. Right. Um, and he continues to um, indulge his deeper... Um, <laughs> No, I'm, I'm with you. He's in his deeper tendencies, but he's still harboring this fantasy, which is probably quite likely a fantasy mm-hmm. of going, you know, going straight, going mm-hmm. legit. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's a redemption theme going on here. And obviously, the more they show the child, the more as a viewer we're invested in that redemption. So do you think he'll say they keep pulling me back yeah. in All right. before the end of the so. series? He's said that in so many ways, right. so many times. <laughs> but yes, we say it on the show every time. Every now and then, I like to go on a tangent where I just make um, <laughs> maybe obvious but ridiculous uh, analogies yes. to pull it somewhere yeah, else so we can look at it. Really shiners. Yeah, I, I, I used Will and Grace uh, last oh, time. Yeah, Fantastic. Very nice. Never has that been done. I in think that was with boardwalk. That was that, that's a high bar to reach. Uh, so th- this one is obvious though nerdy. Um, it's all nerdy, B. Oh, it's all nerdy. But th- 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 this will kick up the nerdy quotient a little bit. <laughs> um, so I was th- thinking uh, the Commodore, the sort of um, emperor-like figure, is like the emperor in Star Wars. Holy oh, cow. So Dear Lord. Darth Vader is Nucky. Yeah. He gets corrupted and becomes this bad guy. He wants to be yes. good, but he's the bad guy. Yes. Uh, and that's almost where it stops. Right there. <laughs> no, but that, I mean, listen, Star uh, Wars in and of itself no, it, is a classic right, good versus evil exactly. redemption story. And, and, and really. The difference is yeah. Vader became or nearly became, or came out of the badness to, to be good or try to be good at the very end. I don't see, I think Nucky at the end will 
fall short and embrace the badness. Right. And we never seen Vader drink silently while facing uh, Miranda. What do you think is going through his <laughs> big black suit? That helmet is a glorified sort of... <laughs> exactly. He's got whiskey in one side and water in the other. Amen, brother. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, back to Eli and Van Alden, the most inept duo of... It's uh, fantastic. I actually Bagman. do. I love that dynamic. His, his the seething frustration. They're Laurel and Hardy. Body language is the right is word. fantastic. And they're it's both fantastic. like that. Yeah. yeah. They're these tough guys who can't do anything. I mean, even the way Van Alden was irritated with his wife and crushed out her cigarette, yeah. and then she just lit another one. Yeah. Like whatever. Yep. See ya. Yep. Um, okay, so they got to make up this twenty thousand dollars and give right. it back to Capone and all that. Yeah, stuff. I found this a little confusing. I know. Maybe you should straighten this out for us. I can't promise that. But uh, so they go and they found their mark. They're going to target one of Capone's other bagmen. Right. For some reason. Uh, this is the dumbest thing I can imagine <laughs> yeah, you would do. Yeah, it didn't seem to be adding up. So yeah. they go and they try to steal this money. They're kind of getting away from it or getting away with it. And then the – with these two little random henchmen. And then the higher up bagman – I don't know the character's name, but uh, Big Fat Guy. We've seen him in other episodes before. Um, he comes out, sort of confuses them, squashes the plan. they got to figure out what to do. And they end up shooting all three guys, right? Right, right. It's a mess. Uh, they shoot him in the legs. They're about to walk away. Then they hear him screaming and whatever. And then they're I think it was yeah. Van Alden mm-hmm. comes back and caps both of them in the head. Uh what the hell are they thinking with this? They they yeah. owe Capone twenty grand because they lost it. They go and steal effectively twenty grand from another Capone. one of Capone's guys. They give it to Capone, but then this other guy is missing twenty grand. Like that doesn't like that hole is still but is, there. But is the That's idea a convenient that, that, number that, that again? It's poten- but it's well, is so now, is it, now somebody imply, else owes it. Well, but does it imply though that it, Capone may not know that those guys collected the dough? Okay, what? yes. So, so I think. Sorry, uh, I think the key is maybe they're not that dumb, and they know that Capone is so out of it and doesn't right. know the details. But still, and maybe it's this ridiculous. opens their eyes to a way that they can scam even more. Yeah, maybe this is the opening. But Capone is so outer limits, and there is so much money pouring in, right. and I don't think he knows what the heck. Capone is. doesn't know, but wouldn't you think one of his accountants knows? Like, someone's keeping track of this somewhere, right? Well, I right? mean, they were showing the one guy in right. there who was just, it That's looked true. like they he was just buried, you know, and they were That's messing true. with him. They didn't really respect him. Um, but there was just so much coming in so fast. Yeah. It was almost like implying that there is no way to really track Right. How much is actually coming in? Yeah. And so I think it creates the opportunity for, you know, things to go, to be siphoned off or to go missing right. without anybody really knowing it. I mean, there's chaos all around. Right. There's 20, as you said, 25 guys in this room. Capone's got no yeah. pants on. You know, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's I really just like crazy. his brother, too. I don't know if that's a real character. Yeah, yeah. That guy's awesome. I like him. I like the actor, and I like the way he kind of works with Al. He's, belie- he's believable as... He is believable, yeah. Capone's brother. He is. Yeah. He's, he's great, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Um, chronologically, just to go through it, we see Nucky and his bodyguard talking. Uh, he talks about want- effectively wanting to be Joe Kennedy. Right. Um, I love the bodyguard. Yes. Very sort of... Uh, underplayed performance, but I like that guy. Sort of, he's just like uh, the angel of death. I mean, yeah. he's just like yeah. he's just, just there. And he's clearly he's a, another device because yeah. how else would Nucky get to talk to himself for that period yeah. of time? Right. But, yeah, right. Um, but he is a clever one. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. yeah, just real cool. Just you know, it's kind of whatever you know. Whatever. And, and he also sort of implies that he doesn't really understand English, anyways. So. Yeah. No, yes, but I, I, I would assume. It'll come out that he's just playing that up, and he of knows, course. Yeah, yeah, right. He's listening the entire yeah. time. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, but it's the, it's it's the ear collection. <laughs> yeah. So the whole it's he's listening to everything. Will the, yeah. he take someone else's ear in Atlantic City? He's got to, right? 
I, I want more ears. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lucky Meyer, Lucky Lansky, and Bubsy. Um, not only are they working against um, Nucky. I'm going to get Lucky and Nucky confused. Last podcast, I did this twice, and I, I called Lucky Chalky, like twice. Oh. <laughs> um, so they're working against Nucky, but they're also working against Maranzano behind his back. Like, they're... Right. The, they're, they're on their own. They're a rogue them. little organization against everybody. Right. Nucky and Eli's son have lunch. I thought that was interesting when they were talking about... Well, yeah. Yeah, with, with uh, the whole, did you use my name? You know, you've How got... Right did, go? yeah. did they bring up the family, kind of? Yeah. Yeah. Very godfather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we meet Elliot Ness. Fantastic. But I think, just to go back to that scene, yeah. though, I think that that scene, y- you hear the earnestness in Will's response to whoever it was that he was interviewing with, but then that luncheon brings the doubt back in of really how much can this family actually get away from what's going on. The reputation will always proceed. There's always this expectation. There's always going to be question. And, yeah. and, um, yeah, but he was he, extremely respectful to Nucky. So when right. Nucky asked, you know, did this cheer you up at all? He, of course not. I would, yeah. I would be proud of, yeah. you know, so I, I really have to wonder which end of the, right. which end he's playing here. Yeah. Because it seems like he's playing both ends and yep. I, I want to know what, where we stand on that right. one. So that'll be interesting. But, but that's the point. I mean, it, yeah. ra- it starts to raise all, you know, it's just. Right, where it's, is this going? definitely don't know. Yeah. It's definitely keeping us. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to tell. All right, now Nucky hears from Tonino, who was Jip's former guy, uh, right. who ended up being the guy. I believe he was the one who stabbed Jip. Yes, he was. Jip. Jip. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Jip in the uh, uh, episode or the uh, season three. So then he leaves Jip and goes with, I think, Mazaria. Mm-hmm. Yes, it and was Masaria that they were under in the first place. Right, and then he goes, ends up with uh, Lucky and um, Lansky's crew. So he he'll just go with anybody. He has no loyalty, no um, affiliations. He's just a guy looking not to get whacked. Yeah, I mean, he just he looks scared. Yeah. constantly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so he goes to see Nucky to try he goes to get to see cover. Nucky, and. Completely rolls over on Lansky and <laughs> Lucky and uh, uh, Bugsy. Um, again, just looking for the next guy to buddy up to so he doesn't get killed. Right. Um, right. Lucky listens to him, talks about um, how uh, – or Tonino talks about how Lucky and his crew are going to take out Maranzano um, and that they're also trying to – obviously, they were behind the um, – the assassination, the assassination attempt yeah. on Nucky. Right, right. We got Nucky and Lucky here. He's against both of them essentially, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> which is which is insanity. This guy is just the worst of the worst. No backbone whatsoever. Um, and they also explained one thing that was interesting. He told Nucky that, and there's no reason to doubt this guy at this point. He's just spilling his guts right, with everything. Right. Um, that Maranzano, the boss of bosses, has no issue with Nucky. He's fine with Nucky doing his thing. He's trying to do his own deal in New York. Yeah, that seemed apparent. Yeah. yeah. Which is interesting because these guys were always against each other. And Nucky's a threat to everybody else, but apparently right. not to this guy. Interesting. And then at the end, or toward the end of the, the conversation, Nucky gives the nod to his awesome bodyguard, the Angel of Death, and <laughs> the guy's taken out. Mm-hmm. Uh, not really surprising, but it, it was sort of classic uh, uh, Nucky. Um, and then we notice that they were sitting underneath the picture or caricature of... Billy, his Billy, former girlfriend. The, uh, the, 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 the dancer, the, dancer, the showgirl the that actress. he really, right. really seemed to yeah. love. Which made us and everyone, I'm sure, think, oh, this this Tonino guy was the guy behind the bombing that killed right. Billy. And this was some sort of payback for that Right, moment. right. Which shows, taking care of all family business today. Right, shows right. a lot of uh, patience on Nucky's mm-hmm. part and perseverance, I suppose. Which shows that he can't, he can never go clean. He's always right. settling debts. He's always 
He's got that memory, and he holds a grudge, and he's not. He's not going to let anybody. He get can't let go of it. Yeah. yeah. What else we got here? Uh, Julian in the sanitarium director. We talked about that. Creepy as hell. That's our winner for so, for creepy creepiest I, of the I, week. I would agree. So who who do you think she's writing to? I mean, why did you, why why get the paper? I don't know. I don't know if she's finally lost her own. I mean, who, who would help her? The only thing is Nucky, right? She's the only connection, or maybe or, Lu- Lucky Luciano, because they had a thing early on. Assuming, assuming she's Nucky. reaching out for help, right? It's got. I think it's got to be Nucky, right? Yeah, yeah. She's got. I mean, Jillian strikes me as no matter what this, how bad this predicament and how much she was caught off guard with the situation, she's definitely got some aces buried somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, she just needs to go find them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and. The episode ends on seeing the final result of the obvious uh, killing of Tonino by Nucky's bodyguard. Um, thrown on the steps of Lansky's, I guess, L- yeah. Lucky's too, um, headquarters, basically. Um, sending a message like, I know you're involved. Right. Here's your guy. Can't take Here's me. Here's a postcard. Yeah. yeah. That was brilliant. I can't wait to see how Luca that... Brazzi sleeps with the fish- That's fishes. That's right. That's right. Okay, so quality kill. That's the only one of the episode, really. Well, I mean, other than the um, sort of heist for the $20,000 in Chicago. Yeah. yeah, at the beginning. Quality kill. Some kills there. Um, creepiest creep of the week. Jillian. That's Jillian. Yep. Gotta be. And the warden. The warden. The warden yeah. might even win. I think I think the warden going through that whole speech and her questions, you know, yeah. like, why are you here? Yeah. You know, it was just so... Ugh. Yeah. You have to wonder what, yeah. you know, when a person chooses to do certain and things for their life. And when Dr. Cotton is happy. I mean, dude, ugh. <laughs> Yikes. My favorite character this week in many weeks when he's on is Van Alden. I still... Uh, naturally. He's amazing. He's naturally. out of control. Um... Although when he when this other guy's on, he's my favorite character, and that, that's Chalky. Chalky's yeah. my guy. Oh yeah, I agree. He's my favorite guy probably throughout the entire series. We talked about this. Before. Yeah, he's one of my favorites too. So have you been disappointed that Narcisse has not made an appearance yet that's, officially? So that's the the major guy we haven't seen yet. Yeah. But he was featured in the preview of the upcoming episode, right. yeah. so he's on his way back next week, and it'll be yeah. very interesting. Michael, who is not with us today, has a particular disdain for Narcisse. He doesn't like Narcisse. Oh, really? Yeah. And he doesn't understand why he wouldn't have just been assassinated. Right. He causes so many problems for so many of the characters. Michael's contention with this plot point is that I don't understand why they wouldn't just eliminate this problem. And Brandon and I both sort of conceded that that did seem a little curious. True. But... But I mean, was he on the? Er- I mean, was he? Does this potentially create a new revenue stream? In in some way, the heroin dealings that he was really promoting. I think it was heroin, wasn't it? Yeah. And you know that you know as as prohibition potentially or is going to end but as as they're seeing this potential for it ending, keeping him around, have him almost like build that up to potentially uh, take over maybe. or you know i mean that they're but I, but he, he's a rogue agent I, I think he's on his own um we haven't seen him yet i don't know well we will see him next week for sure yeah i'm excited about that to see yeah. what happens there i mean i in our season five preview um i talked about i i kind of think it's, it's going to be he's the rabbit out there that chalky is chasing and, and chalky has to confront right. him and take him down but who knows at this point? I mean, it, it's so convoluted. I'm excited. Yeah, I am too. It's going to be really good this yep. week. I can't wait It'll to It'll be see good. It. Yep, It'll excited. be good. Hopefully next week we'll have Mike back. And uh, that'll be... Uh, Although, Allison, it was a pleasure having you here. Well, thank right. you. I enjoyed right. it. Special guest. We'll definitely have you back for the finale. I'm excited. Um, possibly before then. But uh, the finale, we're going to have... A full house. Well, and if my prediction comes true before they, beforehand, I would like to be on there to... <laughs> oh, you will be recognized. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have... We're uh, happy. In the immortal words of our friend, Mio Santiago, 
Oh, it is written. <laughs> so it is told. Yeah. We make so many bad predictions. A good one, we're happy to point out. Uh, all right, that wraps episode two. Episode three will happen next week with hopefully Mike back. And maybe we can get a new special guest. We have one in the, in the wings. And uh, keep watching. Keep listening. Keep enjoying. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, clink it up. Clink. Thank you for listening to Boardwalk Breakdown and follow us on Twitter at Boardwalk Breakdown.